not wise, Captain. The Codex Astartes does not support this action. Empress, damn it, Leandros. Why must you insist on ruining all the fun? This sucks. Now, th this completely sucks. So, Captain, shut the hell up, Leandros. You ruined my family! Can't believe that I'm falling for so long. I had this whole soundtrack planned and everything was going to be all cool. And then he has to come with his codes or start his to support his action. <sighs> this fall is going on forever. Feels like 10 years. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, it's getting close. Hero. Jenkins. Attention, denizens of the Imperial Palace and beyond! How's it going everybody? Jack here with another video. So it's been nearly two months since the reveal trailer of Space Marine 2 was shown at the Game Awards. And I do believe that most people in the community who had had the opportunity to play its prequel are very excited to be able to jump back into the now primary boots of Captain... <coughs> sorry, Lieutenant Titus. So to reap and tear to a new horse of Xenos, figuring out what had happened in the last 200 years, and giving Leandros what he freaking deserves. However, with an overall lack of information, one thing we can be certain of is that the game is not slated to be released this year. However, I would like to turn your gaze towards another Warhammer release that is looking pretty awesome. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong footage. The word Chaos Gate might be something that brings a bit of nostalgia to some old players. But think of waiting a decade to see the continuation of a game. Think about waiting twice that amount for the sequel of a game that released in 1998. Yes, a game so damn old that when I tried to play it my PC laughed at me and the game shut down. Now for those who then truly got immersed in it and the newcomers like myself, the folks at Complex Games have got you covered as they have decided to bring a fresh take onto it. That is with Chaos Gate Demon Hunters. Now this time around, instead of just playing as a run of the mill space blueberry, you get to wear the armor of the cream of the crop. These are the Grey Knights. We are the warriors of the Grey Knights. Demon Hunters. Story. Ah, uh, read the books. In this game, you get to lead the Grey Knights of Strike Force Zethos, who, accompanied by Inquisitor Valkyr, are tasked to eliminate a horrifying Nurgle induced plague known as the Bloom. This one has begun to overwhelm the Tartius sector and threatens to spread across the entire galaxy. This is where you come in, as answering the threat of chaos in your strike ship, the Baleful Edict, implies just not the containment of the Bloom, but its extermination. And you do this as you uncover mysteries, build your forces and fight against threats small as well as great along the way. Oh, and did I mention that you get to encounter Primark in the game? For Demon Prince Mortarion, aka Evil Morty, is to show his face in the game, which would be a first for a Primark to ever be showcased in a 40k game ever. So kudos to that. Now the story of Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate Demon Hunters was created in close collaboration with Games Workshop and written by Black Library's very own Aaron Dembski Bowden. So you can expect something very good out of this one. Now do we actually get to defeat Evil Morty? That I cannot say but what I can tell you more about is the gameplay. Chaos Gates has turn based tactics, duh I hear you say. Well, I like to think of it as a combination of all the positive for the previous games of the genre that I've tried before in the 40k universe. That being the likes of the Dawn of War games, Mechanicus, Battlefleet Gothic, uh, maybe not so much, but a bit of Inquisitor Martha, definitely. But when I say turn-based, don't imagine anything in the likes of the tabletop, because nothing here will remind you of a dice roll or anything relying on chance. For the Grey Knights don't miss their shots, as they offer players total precision when they open fire against the forces of chaos. With powerful psychic powers 
environmental destruction and precision targeting in melee, offering even more advantages in the heat of battle. Now, the game will unfold in two ways, one being in your, for lack of better word, hub area, your ship, the Baleful Addict. A strike ship that you will have to keep under constant maintenance. For any ship dealing with Nurgle forces might feel just as well as getting through the warp without a gale of field. Dangle. Taking care of its defense and support systems, managing such things as the hull integrity and ship speed. This can all be done in the stratagem aboard the ship. This is also where you will command your strike cruiser to respond against the growing bloom threat, monitoring its spread via the star map and deciding where to go next. Think of a better map than the one that you got in Mechanicus, like way better. And the Grand Manufactorum will let the players first repair the ship and later upgrade the vessel, enhancing its capabilities significantly. Speaking of upgrades, let's talk about the one done to your Grey Knights, which the ship of course also provides. As players can access the barracks where they'll manage the squad's equipment and upgrades. And what's great is that in this barracks as well, you can truly live your fantasy of customizing each of your battle brothers to your liking. Tweaking such things as crest, skin color, hair color, armor pieces and so much more. As you can see, there are certain slots that are class restricted because the Grey Knight comes in a variety of classes, starting with the Justicar, Interceptor, Apothecary and Purgator. An additional set of four advanced classes will unlock towards the campaign. These being the Paladin, Chaplain, Librarian and Purifier. Each of them come with their own abilities and tactical options. So you will have nearly all the tools possible to take the fight against Chaos. The one thing lacking of course being a can of Axe Body Spray but there is no STC to manufacture those. One thing that I appreciate quite a bit is the skill tree. It feels very intuitive and straightforward. Additionally in the armory, Grandmaster Varden Kai offers equipment requisition to boost the war efforts. And in the library's malice, Inquisitor Vakir will enhance the Green Ice combat abilities and unlock stratagems for them, which are tie turning psychic abilities. And lastly, to elaborate a bit more on the requisition, which is done in a very law friendly way, like very 40k, by showing your dedication to the chapter, your strike force is uh, granted rewards over time, such as additional green lights, master crafted weapons, armors and specialized war gear. And completing additional combat mission challenge known as Glorious Deeds, which impose tougher limitation on objectives, you will unlock additional requisition points that you can spend. When all that is said and done, it's time for your commander and your battle brothers to set forth for battle. Here you will face a variety of Nurgle threats such as the Poxwalkers, the Plague Bearers, Plague Marines, Bright Lords, Terminators, the one thing that even Chaos don't want to be, Hell Brutes, and so much more. Crazy this time around is that enemies in fact can mutate during combat missions, visually changing and gaining combat buffs. Here the success of your combat is more than ever decided on your positioning and timing, with now a cover base system and the many other tricks that the Grey Knights have in their sleeves. Now each Grey Knight has a reserve of willpower which is spent on psychic powers and it's primarily regained by slaying enemies on the battlefield. Psychic powers range from more powerful melee attacks that will allow you to take down an enemy that you otherwise couldn't do immediately, to area of effects abilities that will supply your other knights with buffs. Now what you're seeing right now is what is called a warp surge, which are unpredictable combat mission events that can call in new enemies reinforcements activate powerful mutations and introduce unpredictable effects and hazard onto the battlefield. Now, the more corrupt the map is, the more likely a warp surge event will occur, but enemy actions and Grey Knight abilities can further influence the warp surge as well. While they can fare pretty well in ranged combat, the Grey Knight shines the brightest, <laughs> shines the brightest saying that as if they were like Sailor Moon characters. Well, anyways, we're gonna stick to that. The Grey Knight is trying to brightest in melee combat, very up close. It is nice that this time around we have a limb targeting system. It is not VATS, for remember, we don't deal in probabilities here. 
we either hit or don't hit. But in the case of this apostate preacher, for example, it allows us to stop him from casting more of his hex and dealing him a fatal blow. This also comes in very handy against the Hell Brute, lest you want your Green Knight to partake into non safe for work content of the Japanese variety. Now, lastly, the Green Knight will take on some towering and powerful foes. Powerful boss enemies in the form of Reapers of the Bloom. Greater demons like Aegir the Benevolent, which was showcased some time ago. Now, I do realize that Grandpapa Nurgle is somebody that people might just be a little bit Nurgled out about, as he is the god that most people just encounter all the time. However, as you get deeper into the campaign, you can look forward to encountering Mortarion of the Death Guard. Chaos Gate Demon Hunters looks to me like a pretty neat game. One where the developers have poured a lot of love into it with a huge variety of locations, enemy types and some very gorgeous animation that I cannot wait to try myself. That said though, I'd like to know your opinion on this game. Please let me know in the comment section below and as always, if you liked the video, you know what to do. Hit that like and or subscribe button and please check out the main Chaos Gate Demon Hunter YouTube channel or stay tuned here as more information will be dropped out soon. With that, I wish you all a wonderful evening, see you guys next time, bye.